Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everybody, again, welcome to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app and use the code BearBets. That's the code BearBets for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets. November is here. Well, not yet. A couple days. Well, November 2nd will be Saturday. First uh, weekend of college football in November. College football playoff rankings come out. Uh, next week, so we'll have a better idea of the uh, the pecking order as the committee sees fit right now. I'm the Bear, joined by Jeff, Will, and Sammy P. Will join us in the gambling group chat uh, coming up. So I guess we'll probably just start just kind of the the playoff hook. Um, are there teams out there right now, Jeff, that you have a little bit of concern potentially about <laughs> making the playoff, or is there someone out there right now that maybe we're not thinking about making the playoff that potentially should be in the playoff? I mean, at this point, probably not there, right? I mean, we pretty much have, a, I think, a bubble at the top of, of teams that we think can make it. Now, the question obviously is who who doesn't make it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there. This this feels so different this season with the twelve team playoff, where I, I view this college season, like an NFL season, which I have never done before, right? Where it's like style points don't matter, right? For any team, just win in advance. Same with the NFL, right? Just win in advance. And we can certainly mm-hmm. talk about how you win when it comes to playoff time, right? Like who you played, how does it look, but just win in advance. And then losses don't kill you. I mean, LSU just lost this past weekend. They're still in the playoff hunt. They have two losses, right? And so I, I feel myself looking at the sport much different this season. It, it, it makes it a little bit um, not less exciting is the wrong word because more teams could be in the playoff bear, but each individual game doesn't feel as consequential as it has in the past, right? Even oh, even this weekend, if Ohio State loses this weekend, they're still in the playoff. Penn State obviously would be twelve would be most likely undefeated. They're in the playoff, but again, like it 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 doesn't change the playoff picture very much. Other than if you think Ohio State loses to Penn State. Do they lose to Indiana in two weeks and they're plus six fifty to be out of the playoffs? Bear, that feels like a bridge too far to cross for me, though. I, I can't get I can't get them not making the playoffs. Yeah, I, I can't see them dropping both of those games uh, this week and then the home game against Indiana, and they should beat Michigan uh, the, the final week of the yeah. of, of the season as well. Like I know that price out there is uh, insanely good, but I I don't know if I can get behind that. But there, there are a couple of teams that I think might be worth a look uh, to make the playoff. Uh, Tulane is one. They play Thursday night. Uh, you can get them at a really nice number. Still, I think North is uh, $6 to make the playoff. I think uh, re- you don't need that much. I, don't, I think you might just need a a Boise loss and Tulane to wind up winning the, uh, the American in order for that ticket to cash. I think that's worthwhile. And, and I think we might be overlooking Kansas State a little bit in the Big 12, I mean, I have an Iowa State ticket, obviously, that that I would love to cash. Uh, Iowa State hosts Kansas State, I believe. I believe it's in Ames. Yes, it is. It, it should be in Ames. I believe final, it's in Ames, Final too, week yeah. of the year, but yeah. you would think that uh, Kansas State should be, beat Houston this week, beat Arizona State, beat Cincinnati, and that game will probably be pretty close to a toss-up there. And that, that game, if they were to pull the upset over Iowa State – it hold the the tiebreaker over the clones, and you very easily could see them in the Big Twelve championship game against BYU, which that was a complete anomaly of a box score uh, that first meeting in in Provo. Yeah. So, 
if you're looking for two teams that you might not necessarily be thinking about right now making the playoff, I'd be looking at Kansas State and Tulane. Yeah, I love the Tulane play. Obviously, kind of a quirky game this weekend or this Thursday in Charlotte. Um, you know, the other the other one that I'm looking at just for a, a sort of a future bear right now is uh, you know these plus two thirty to win the Mountain West. If you look at the post game win expectancy of their loss against Boise State, uh, most of the people that that give us those numbers. Uh, have UNLV as the better team throughout that game doesn't mean that you win and lose a game, right? We, Boise State won that game. Is there value in taking in taking UNLV, or are they just sort of snake bitten by Boise State now? They've been, lost two times in a row, and Boise State's just going to run through them when they play again in the Mountain West Championship game. Well, I, well, I think if they do want, I mean, I guess you just kind of have to project your number to if they do get to the 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 conference championship game, what will they be on Boise State's home field? I mean, the, the one thing that you do need to concern yourself with uh, are the Mountain West standings. And, and you, do, you do have Colorado State and San Diego State right there still undefeated. And, look, I, I don't think Colorado State no. uh, is any good. But but if you if you look at their yeah. schedule, that might be a uh, kind of a favorable path to get uh, through there. Nevada, Wyoming, Fresno State, Utah, like, like there, there's a chance they go – uh, three and one at worst there, and, and I don't know what ultimately would would yeah. be decided in in the tie break there. So I don't think it's a guarantee we get that we get that game. Yeah. Look, Colorado State can lose to anybody, um, but I almost wonder if uh, if UNLV would be a bigger dog on the blue on the blue turf. I mean, yeah. eh, maybe not because I'm sure that price is kind of factored in right now. Well, actually, take that back. They were a four-point dog on their home field, so they're yeah. probably going to be a six-point dog at least up up at Boise if they play against. You. You're probably going to get a better number, yeah. Uh, if if you just wait, so the, the, I'm, I'm, I might hang out and uh, and wait for that as well. So the if last you want to hang out? What I say the, the last team very just quickly. I think that's worth discussing because they they're better than we thought. Colorado to make the playoff any chance? I think the I think the answer is no because Iowa State. BYU have really easy schedules bear and they're just not going to lose enough games for Colorado to, to surpass them. Right. Like that's, I think where we're at Colorado schedule, by the way, also I wouldn't Colorado is, is going at minimum nine and three, in my opinion, they could, there's a real chance they go, they go 10 and two, but I think Iowa state, they have the Kansas state game, obviously, but boy, BYU is not losing. I, I don't know who they're losing to on the schedule. No. Um, I, I think we talked about Colorado a couple weeks ago as a playoff team, and then Will and I got much better numbers. I don't know if you jumped in on it, Bear. I think it's too late to take Colorado at 600 when it was like 1,300 a couple weeks ago. It, it is, and boy, I'll tell you, that that non-pass interference call at the end of that game against Kansas State uh, could wind up being very, very costly. Because, yeah, I, I don't think uh, they get in at 10-2 and two because they won't have a win yeah. over a ranked team. They will have lost to K-State at home. They will have lost to Nebraska. But they they could be the best team in the league right now. Uh, they're, in terms, they're playing of, really. They're they're playing really well. The the butterfly effect of that hail mary against Baylor is pretty remarkable, right? So they lose yep. that game. Bear their season is different. It just it just is. They make a play. Travis Hunter forces a fumble there, and they're looking at ten and two. Like I I realistically think who are they losing to on the schedule? Maybe Texas Tech in a couple of weeks, but their Colorado's off a of bye, and Texas Tech is off most likely a loss to Iowa State. I think it's realistic to think Colorado is winning out. Texas Tech, Utah, whatever Utah is now, at Kansas, Oklahoma State, who can't stop a nosebleed. So uh, I think Colorado is going 10-2. and two. Yeah, I think there's a really good chance they go 10-2. and two And it was curious to see, not curious, but it was interesting just to see the uh, the Heisman market move uh, with the two the two quarterbacks and Travis Hunter and Ashton Chanty. It's probably, you're, you're, we're, we're down to those four guys, yes. I think. Even if you're holding a one of those other SEC quarterbacks, I, I think you're out. You're probably you're looking at you're looking at Beck Ward, Genty, and Hunter. As much as I would love to see a Shadur fifty to one stab that I throw in there, get there. I don't think yeah. that's going to happen. But uh, it, it looks like it's one of those four guys. And speaking of four guys, we got four guys who are going to uh, kick some stuff around here coming up. Myself, Jeff, joined by Sammy P and Will on the Gambling Group Chat. Enjoy. Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself and Jeff joined, as always at this time, uh, by Sammy P. and Will Hill. And figure we start with the biggest story uh, going on these days, the election. I'll be in the, uh, the swing state of Pennsylvania, 
for uh, Penn State and Ohio State. <laughs> Red, the Buckeyes, Ohio State. Well, I was going to go red, but uh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> Penn State Blue Band. We'll see. We'll see. Penn State's going to swing the election, so uh, we'll, we'll 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 see what goes on this week. Uh, certainly, I, I know that's all. That's all we want to talk about today, right, guys? Let's. I'm in. I, I'm enjoying everyone's very reasonable, very level-headed takes about the election. No matter which side people are on, everyone's just completely reasonable. No irrationality going on, which is uh, which is always nice to see. No, nah, no one else is biting, huh? Nah, we're not, we're not going to talk about uh, the election. This some, some of the gambling group chat bears. Bear. Some no. of the gambling group chat has to stay in the gambling group chat, okay? We'll, 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 okay. we'll keep it where yeah. it is. Um, I, I, I just I just wanted to give Sully, our producer, a heart yeah, attack by saying we're going to start talking about uh, about the election this week. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but kidding, kid, kidding aside, um, Penn State, Ohio State, biggest game of the week. We got number three versus number four, uh, Penn State. Uh, last week uh, came away with a uh, a nice second half half performance against Wisconsin. Uh, Rabula had to come in and replace Drew Aller. We still don't know the status of Drew Aller. My guess, my guess right now, sitting here recording this on Wednesday, is we're going to see uh, by P- Bo Rabula play. And Ohio State escaped uh, with a really ugly home win against Nebraska. Uh, this is our Super 6 game of the week, uh, sponsored by DraftKings. Uh, we'll have the column coming out later in the week. Question's going to be, obviously, uh, what will the outcome be of Ohio State at Penn State? Uh, we've got all the variables and all those wonderful storylines like we've heard all along with, with, with James Franklin, what, 1-9 and nine against Ohio State, uh, Two in what two and eight against against uh, Michigan. So what what is that? Three and seventeen against Michigan and Ohio State. Lost twelve straight regular season games against top ten teams uh, since they upset Ohio State in sixteen. Uh, lost fourteen of the last sixteen games as an underdog of two wins coming uh, against Wisconsin at Camp Randall. And then we've got the and then we got the storyline that I think is a little bit overblown and a, and a little bit of bu- a, a little bullshit to be honest with you. Uh, the whole Ryan Day's two and six against top five teams. Three of those losses came against teams that won the national championship: Alabama in twenty, Georgia in twenty-two, Michigan in twenty-three. The last three losses came by a combined eight points, including a couple of one-point losses, like the game uh, at Austin a couple weeks ago. So mm-hmm. I, I think people are just uh, make making a, a mountain out of a molehill there. So uh, there, there's some of the uh, the streaks and the trends and everything. Uh, Jeff, I, I'll start yeah. with you. I think the biggest factor and the biggest concern I would have in this game if I were betting Ohio State is the Ohio State offensive line. You lose your left tackle. They brought in a backup left tackle last week. He's out now, so they may slide the guard over there to play left tackle and move a a, a new guy in to play. Like All of these offensive line combinations and woes, how easy is this to kind of fix, manipulate, or is it not? And this is going to be a major, major problem on Saturday. Oh, I think it's a huge problem, Bear. Um, because when you watch a game Saturday, you were there. I, I had Ohio State. I think we might have all had Ohio State in some aspect of that game. Team total over, you know, game line, whatever it was. And when you watch that game with the offensive line, it was clear early on they were struggling to block Nebraska's front. Nebraska has a good front. And Chip Kelly did nothing different. He called the same game plan, and they ran the ball even too much with a bad offensive line. And, and so that was worried me the most is there was no adjustments off of bye week, right? You had two weeks to prepare for the Nebraska game. You had two weeks to look at your team, evaluate your team and say, hey, man, we may not be able to block as well in this game. Let's throw the ball to our best players on offense, which are our wide receivers. Let, let's get them in space. Let's get the ball down. Let's play action pass. Let's max protect. And now you go on the road to Penn State. What does Penn State do well, guys? They have a good defensive line, right? They have a good defense. And now you're going to pass the ball a lot more. Look, the thing about Ohio State's offense, too, is that Will Howard, I thought he played well in Oregon. Yeah, the, the late gaff is what it is. I thought he threw the ball well against Nebraska. So, so Will, like, if if Ohio State decides to throw the ball, I feel better about their chances in this game. But to me, it's just a low-scoring game because Penn State, I don't think it's going to score very much. And even It doesn't matter who plays quarterback. They don't have the weapons to generate explosive plays. And you just take away the tight end, you're done there. And then Ohio State offensive line wise really concerns me. The play calling concerns me. Uh, yeah, can Jeremiah Smith and, and Abuka and all those guys make plays at the ball up to them? Absolutely. But Will, I see an under game, man. I see this game being, you know, may, maybe a team touches twenty, and, and that's about it. Uh, I'm totally with you, and we've seen this line come down a little bit. So you're you're losing a couple points of value as opposed to if we're doing the show a couple of days ago, where you know, look, it was 47 and a half. Now we're down to 45. I still think the way to play this under 21 and a half. First half available at DraftKings. 
Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit like a boxing match. There's a feeling out process early. It's a, it's a little bit ugly. It's a little bit sluggish. Teams, both coaches can be a little bit conservative. We saw that last year. And I think, you know, you go back to last year, I think we see a similar type of game. I think last year was 20 to 12. And, and to your point, Jeff, I don't, I don't know. Can either team really run the ball? I mean, Ohio State. 28 carries for 64 yards against Nebraska. This Penn State front is going to be better than the Nebraska front. Uh, I don't know that Penn State can run the ball in Ohio State. My concern with the full game under is when these teams can't run the ball and eventually they're going to realize, hey, we're just running into a brick wall. Or just, they're just going to throw it basically every down. And, you know, even if you're not throwing it successfully, throwing is just bad for unders because, you know, the clock stops or you get big plays, you get, you know, big plays on offense or you get turnovers. Exactly. So to me, you know, this is kind of a. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, 10, 10 at halftime, 10, seven at halftime. I think it'll be conservative. I, I life on the line. I think Ohio state wins like a field goal game. I'd probably take the points if anything, but uh, as far as actually betting under 21 and a half first half is my bet, Sammy. Market certainly agrees with you two on the total. I mean, this opened about 46 and a half. They bet it up a little bit and then just slammed it down. So we're sitting 45 right now at most books, 45 at DraftKings. It's hard to go under much lower numbers. Like if it gets to 44, there's going to be resistance back up because 44 is just too low for a number that at one point was at 48. Um, I said last week, I would love to take the points north of three. And that's where we sit because Penn State did its job um, against Wisconsin and Ohio State survived against Nebraska. Drop off wise, Bear, I don't have much from Aller to Prabula. I just don't. And it's so funny because when I started at Fox three or four years ago, it was wait till you see Sean Clifford get benched <laughs> for Drew Aller. And now it's, there's no drop off between Aller and Perbula. The backup quarterback is like the Chicago bears backup quarterback, put in Josh McCown. <laughs> like that, that's somehow the backup is always more popular at Penn state. This backup can also do more. Aller's more of a pocket passer, a traditionalist, Prabula reminds me, you know who he reminds me of? Trace McSorley. Ooh. That's sort of what he plays like. He can throw, but he can do a little bit of everything. And I know James Franklin is one in nine against Ohio State, but I don't remember Ohio State's offensive line being in this bad of shape going into a game against Penn State. On a neutral, I've got Ohio State three points better. So at Happy Valley, Penn State should probably be a small favorite. Let's be real. Yeah, and, and I think to echo your point on Prabula and uh, the offense, like it just looks like Kotelnicki's offense is designed for him. The the, the RPO, the the quick throws, like like Trey Wallace is not like a a deep threat kind of guy. He's more of a get, get him in space, quick hitter, slants, uh, get him out and make a play. And then obviously you've got Warren, so. It will uh, it will be interesting to see uh, what what happens there in, at State College on Saturday. Um, I certainly feel like if you liked Ohio State to potentially get to the Big Ten championship game and and win and avenge the loss to Oregon, I don't know how I feel about that right now. With I mean, obviously they're going to have to win on Saturday to get there. Did, before we get on to the rest of the card, do do you think? We might have had this wrong all along in the Big Ten where maybe Oregon's slow start kind of took us off the set. And, Jeff, you alluded to it earlier. Like, nothing that happens before Ohio State matters with Oregon. I think that was exactly what you said. So yeah. do, do you think we are at a point now where maybe all everyone collectively, maybe not just us on the show or us on the show, but like kind of overrated Ohio State a little bit and maybe got thrown off the scent on Oregon just a little bit because of the slow start? Well, it's certainly possible, but look, college football tends to boil down to who has the better players, right? I mean, the evaluation services now that that give the stars out are, are pretty accurate. They're pretty good. Uh, you may not like them, but they they predict first round picks at a high rate. Like they're 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 good. At their job. And Ohio State has a bunch of really good football players. Now that doesn't you know that doesn't <laughs> you look into coaching and clearly defensively. On the defensive line, they looked more active against Nebraska, but you know there's some questions about how good are they really, right? Is the scheme really helping them out at all? And then obviously Will Howard in the offense and Chip Kelly. So I, I don't know, Bear. If they win this game, which 
I think they're going to do. I'm not sure they cover, but if they win this game, then all the questions we just had about Ohio State are gone, right? They're just gone. They yep. played slow against Nebraska and and, and whoop de doo They 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 uh, they beat Penn State, and then they're back to play Oregon again because I think they beat Indiana. Do we all agree? Like Indiana's a great story, but I think when they run up against Ohio State, that story probably ends right there. So then the rematch with Oregon. As an Oregon fan, though, I'm certainly rooting for Penn State today. I don't want to play Ohio State again. I mean, they, that might be the answer, right? I don't want to play that team again because of how talented they are. Well, think about this, too. If Ohio State loses this game by a field goal, they're still getting in the playoff. Right. And I also think that makes them more dangerous. And guess what else? People watching this show care about one thing. Right. Bets and price. Well, that's two things. Bets and price. <laughs> one thing. Bets and price. Um, they go to 7-1 to one to win the whole thing if they lose this game. But the committee is going to put them in with a one-point loss at Autzen and a three, four, six point loss against the Knits in Happy Valley. They're going to be in, and then they don't have to play in the Big Ten Championship game, and they get more time to figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to attack teams in the playoff. Can you imagine Ohio State is a seven or an eight seed in the playoff? (laughs) They have more talent than almost every team in the country, and guess what? They're also going to have time to get that offensive line healthy. So, a loss here does not kill them. It's weird. I like Penn State in the game, but if Penn State wins, I will bet Ohio State to win the title. Yeah, some, something missing with that team, though. I, I don't know what it is. That wasn't impressive last week. I, I just, uh, I haven't really been impressed all year. I, I mean, and Baron, you can downplay the stat like Day hasn't won these games by, or he hasn't lost these games by a lot of points. I mean, try telling that to Ohio State fans because if you're not beating Michigan oh, yeah. like they haven't in the past few years and they're not winning national titles, I mean, the rest is just noise. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it makes sense what you're saying, but they're, they're just, boy, he, there's some pressure on him. If they lost like a national title game or whatever, all right, you live with it, you wouldn't be happy. But anything short of like losing a national title game to Georgia or winning it all, oof, I, I don't know what that's going to look like in a couple months. They, they beat Michigan in a couple of weeks at home. That, is, that goes a lot. That's more important to those Ohio State fans, I think, than, than winning a national. They beat Michigan, you get into the playoff, and, and you lose to Georgia or whomever. Like, that's that's forgivable. But but the, the Michigan game is everything for uh, Ohio State. But there is one other ranked matchup this week. Uh, and before the year started, I don't think anybody would have pegged Pitt at SNU <laughs> uh, to, to be a, a matchup of top 20 teams the uh, first weekend in November. Uh, the line is seven and a half right now. I think Eli Holstein is going to go from what my guys at around Pitt tell me, but I don't know, man. This just feels like a spot where Pitt could be ambushed. I, I don't know. It was funny, Will, because last week when I was on with uh, Gil Alexander on a numbers game, he asked me who I thought the most fraudulent undefeated team was, and I said BYU, but I don't know if I necessarily believe that now. I, I think it's Pitt. Uh, you look, you got three wins by four points or fewer. You got your last two weeks, you, you won with 277 yards, 215 yards. You've got six non offensive touchdowns on the year. Like it feels like a bubble that's ready to pop. SMU was really lucky to survive last week. Yeah on the road against Duke. By the way, this is like the college football nostalgia in me. I don't nostalgia. I don't think that's a word, but I just made it up. But I, I think back to the 83 Cotton Bowl, Dickerson, Marino, uh, Craig James in that game, a bunch of NFL Hall of Famers, 7-3 defensive battle. It was uh, really SMU's like last stand before they got uh, the death penalty and put on probation. So you, I, I just think back to – to, to, to games like that when, when these teams were legit on, on the national landscape. And uh, here they are again, meeting his ranked teams. I actually like SMU in this game, minus the points. I think the other shoe is bound to fall here at some point on, uh, on Pitt Sammy. Yeah, Chris Andrews at South Point, I was talking to him and he said they took some whopper bets on the favorite. And remember this number open in Vegas at six and it got blown through seven by Tuesday. <laughs> You know, we have a, a saying in our group thread. That's not Marge Simpson moving that money. It, it's certainly not. That is that is not Marge betting that on Monday and Tuesday. Tough spot for Pitt. Numbers wise, I have SMU six points better on a neutral. Game is at SMU. Uh, numbers say bet the Stangs. 
Pittsburgh's been a great story. And it's not like we're saying Pittsburgh stinks or Pittsburgh shouldn't be this or that. It's just this is one of the worst spots of the season for any team in the country. And people will look up at their apps and they'll pull up the app and go, wait a minute, they're undefeated and I'm getting seven and a half. What could go wrong? And then exactly. you look up, Will, and it's 14 nothing in the first quarter. And then and then you start live betting the dog. Oh, I'll take 11 and a half. <laughs> this could be that rabbit hole game where people just chase Pitt all the way down to plus 21 and they get railroaded. Yeah, and uh, what's wrong with Holstein? Because if, if it's a concussion, man, that's even more reason to fade Pittsburgh. I can't get behind SMU. I just think the, the loss of R.J. Maryland is really important, really underrated. Um, I'd probably lay it before I took it. I'm not betting in this game. I, I do have SMU to win the ACC at 16-1. to 1. And, Bear, you referenced the election. Uh, who uh, I will vote for whoever finds a way to put SMU in the ACC title game. Because I feel like I'm about to get screwed here. And you guys, I'm just warning you, you guys will never hear the end of it if SMU goes on defeat in ACC play and gets left out of that title game. I'll be so bitter. Um, Who could have ever imagined that the 16 team conference is going to have ridic- ridiculous tie breaks and potentially have like, like a, a bunch of uh, one loss teams and, and like three of them were going to be left out of the, out of the conference title game. It never, ever, ever oh. was a possibility. No, frustrating. no. Really I mean, frustrating. how about an 18 team league that has no, that has no, uh, has no divisions. Um, SMU guys was minus six in turnovers and won that game on Saturday night, which is nearly impossible to do. And it does feel like they won't turn the ball over six times this weekend. Um, that feels unlikely. If they don't turn the ball over, I'm with you guys here. I think they defeat Pitt. I don't have anything on this game, but the, the minus six in turnovers and winning on the road is a wild stat. I, I would imagine, Bear, you, you're, our, you're a show researcher, I think. I don't know. Maybe you are. That's never happened before, I right? I can't imagine that it, someone's gone minus six I, I turnovers. I can go back and, and look. I, I, yeah. I, I can pull something up, but I, I can't imagine that that has ever, so I, ever been. I think SMU bounces back. Their quarterback, though, is sort of beat up, though. It's not a problem. He was hurt in that game. He came back in. He then fumbled. Duke got the ball down. It was a kind of a mess of a game, but uh, I think SMU bounces back in a big way. I'm with, I'm, I, I'm with you guys. I think uh, it's pit or nothing. I mean, SMU, Will, SMU would you rather would you rather see Miami or Clemson if SMU gets in? Who would you rather see? Oh, I don't, I don't care if they play the Kansas City Chiefs. I just want them <laughs> in that title game so I can hedge. And I just it's it, I just would feel wrong if they went undefeated and didn't make it. I guess I'd rather face Miami, but um, I, I don't know what do the numbers say. What would that line be? Not that not to get my hopes up too much here because I don't think I'm going to get an opportunity to hedge. I have a feeling it is going to be a Miami Clemson title game. Okay, so Miami, just off of what I have, and again, my numbers are not the end-all, be-all, Miami 125, Clemson 121, SMU 117. So about it, Miami about a touchdown, Clemson about yeah, four. Makes sense. Makes sense. So the, 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 the team that got all those turnovers last week, Duke, uh, any, any issue for Miami this week? Miami a big favorite, 21, kind of a whole hum like ugly rubber hose type beating of a uh, Florida state last week. Cam Moore without a touchdown for the first time, touchdown pass the first time this year, Florida state's offense is so bad. Uh, so Manny Diaz goes back down to South Florida to take on the team where he was the uh, head coach for a couple of years and defensive coordinator. I think this could get extremely ugly. I mean, Duke is another one of those teams where you, you, Somehow you were in a game last week and you couldn't win a game that your opponent was minus six in turnovers the week before you Florida state offensively inept uh, this. I, I just from talking to people in Miami and people around Mario and around the pro, like they would like nothing more than to, to win this game, something to the tune of 45, seven. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of points. I, I don't really have much interest in laying it. Not a game I'll be involved in. I'll, I'll be sitting there with my Duke uh, Duke paraphernalia rooting for a Duke upset somehow, but I, I have a hard time seeing it happen. <laughs> you, you, want, you, want a, you want a pair of, uh, like, Louisville gym shorts or something you can wear on Please. the box? Maybe, <laughs> Please, uh, send root, them over. Root, root, root for Louisville against Clemson? Overnight them. You should do the uh, – remember the jersey back in the day, the uh, A.J. Hawk and Brady Quinn split yes, the jersey? Yes, the split jersey, yes. You should do the uh, Duke SMU yes. split Jersey, like take pictures, send them to the boys. Yes, Bear, you ready? Bear, Miami's going undefeated, buddy. They're, they're going twelve and zero. I don't, I don't see anyone stepping in front of this freight train. It's not going to be Duke this weekend. Not may, maybe. It was funny. I was joking with my buddies down there uh, last week as Kyle McCord was throwing pick six after pick six after pick six. That 
you know that in that final game of the season, McCord is going to have his best game of the year. And, and, and that will still be a very difficult game, I think, uh, for Miami on the road. But but your 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 thought on them going twelve and zero could very well be um, be right. If, I, I think I said this last week on the on the show. I, I know I've said it in a couple places that it just feels like Miami is twenty twenty two TCU Heisman caliber quarterback. Great offense, defense, which gives up a ton of big plays. It didn't last week against an awful offense. Won a, won, won a few 50-50 toss-up games, and ultimately when they play a real complete team that not, and not a team from a uh, kind of a Fugazi conference that they'll, they'll kind of eventually lose. But, hey, you know what? Miami gets to the college football playoff semifinals or the championship game and they lose 66-7 like TCU did. Uh, that, that's fine. I, I will take it because clearly this is a uh, – a team that's improved and after blowing out Florida, blowing out Florida State two and a half years to take that state over in terms of recruiting. So I'm I did making like notes what, here. Bear plus 13 Qs last week of <laughs> season. Is that what we're looking at? 13? Such, I would get, I mean, it's going to be close. I'm guessing you're going to have, if, if you can get 13 or 12 and a half with the orange, how big of an emotional hedge are you going to have on? Oh, I, I will. I will absolutely have uh, Syracuse plus the points for sure. Without, without a doubt, I will have Syracuse plus the points. I mean, and, and at that point, they'll be in the playoff. I mean, because yeah, eleven and one, they're going to be eleven. I mean, you would think uh, that that or eleven and other. Even if they lose, they'd probably be in. So they'd probably be in the SEC title game. But we'll see. Any concern for Clemson? I mean, maybe, maybe not this week, but Louisville's offense is really good. You, Clemson, I think the dirty little secret, I think, with Clemson is while Kate Klubnick and those young receivers have kind of gotten figured it out defensively, I think this team might have some problems. They, they've given up a bunch of points to NC State, a bunch of points to Virginia. Like, I don't think defensively they are what they've been. And you look at the next few weeks, they got Louisville this week. They go to Lane Stadium next week. They go to Pitt in a couple of weeks. And by then, maybe Pittsburgh's offense will be fully healthy. Like, I, there is certainly a non-zero chance, Will, to get your hopes up that they uh, they do not escape that three-game stretch undefeated. Yeah, my first inclination with this game was maybe bet the over or a Clemson team total over. But my goodness, they are making you pay for it because I'm looking at DraftKings 38 and a half, 39 and a half team total for Clemson. The game total 63. I mean, there's pass to offense. You can throw it on Louisville for sure. That And that's ultimately why I think Clemson escapes here. I just think that Louisville secondary, there's too many holes. Now they're good up front and Louisville is going to have their moments moving the ball because, you know, that's a good passing game. Uh, that, you know, they're well coached. I think Shuck has played really well. I just don't know what that secondary. Remember, that's a tough place to win on the road. I, I think Clemson ultimately wins. That 11 looks appetizing. though. 11 a lot of points, you know, with all the issues they're having defensively, Sammy. Why am I looking at Louisville money line prices? Why am I a sicko? <laughs> Why am I a sicko, Bear? They could score. And you're right. I think the one thing <laughs> nobody talks about with Clemson, all I've heard and all that's been regurgitated for six weeks is look at their offense, look at their offense, look they at their They played nobody. Offense. Louisville on the money line is plus 350 right now. I'm just going to make a mental note of that one and a physical note of that one. And see where this number goes throughout the week. I will not be laying points with Clemson. No way. So, Bear, you mentioned the defense for Clemson. And one thing that, that I've noticed this year, I went to look it up while you were talking, is um, they allow a ton of second-half points. I think it's almost eight or nine points difference between first half and second half. Is there a second half over to wager on that's not up yet? Sometimes they do have those up there. I mean, look, oh, yeah, they have a Louisville over team total points, second half over 13 and a half. <laughs> Maybe you play it that way when you look at a, a second half number already for Clemson defense that <laughs> gets worse throughout the game. Interesting thought. I mean, I don't know what their their first their first half scoring margin is, if that's a, maybe some – late garbage points that maybe teams are scoring as well. And maybe the, maybe there's a little something inside the numbers that uh, prove that maybe it's their, maybe their defense isn't as bad as what just some of the, the basic numbers say, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, they, they're going to face some good offenses in that environment. I think at Virginia tech next week will be uh, 
tricky for sure. So talk about a road game for next week for Clemson. There's some road games, I think, this week that are some tricky spots as well. I like Michigan State plus the seven and a half against Indiana. I think if you look at the Hoosiers, I think we're gonna we're not gonna I don't think we're gonna see Curtis Rourke again this week, but I mean their offenses look fine. Uh, with, with the backup in there as well. But I just wonder about how you look at the last couple of weeks with Binion kickoff going there, kind of they're the story, focal center point, and you blow out Nebraska. Following week, game day goes there. Again, you're like the focal point nationally, pregame show, like your, your program's on display. You got Michigan, Ohio State, the two games after this week. And here you go. You got to go up to old, old, East Lansing, old Spartan Stadium at Michigan State, couldn't do a thing on offense against Michigan, and you got to take on the old Spartans. This is a very, very dangerous game, I think, uh, for Indiana, and uh, I wouldn't be opposed, Sammy, to a little uh, a little go green, go white money line there for, uh, for Michigan State. You'll have some people that are very sharp that agree with you. Michigan State, just a tremendous coaching staff. And it's going to take time to grow this program. But this is year one for Jonathan Smith, who I know, Jeff, you're very familiar yeah. with from his days in the Pac-12. You know, look at look at who they played in the last five games at Michigan State. They hang around with Boston College on the road. They, they play well against Ohio State for a little bit. They hung around against Oregon in Eugene. Then they beat Iowa at home and and – lose by one score to Michigan. So they've been extremely tested. They've been six times more tested than Indiana yeah. this year. I mean, who's the toughest team that Indiana has played so far? Nebraska? Um, I, I don't know, guys. I I like Indiana. I'm high on Indiana. We've been talking about Indiana on the show all year. But I don't know that I'm ready to lay seven and a half, eight points with Indiana on the road. Yeah, I mean, this the spot screams Michigan State for all the reasons you guys mentioned, but I don't know, the fact that Signetti, he's new to the Big Ten, does, does that letdown factor, does that lessen a little bit? Maybe the fact that Michigan State's coming off a rivalry game where, hey, they were in the game and it got away from late, does that hurt the spot? I mean, I, I'm not looking to line up and lay points on the road, especially over a touchdown with Indiana. It'd be Michigan State or nothing. I just don't know. Uh, I just don't know if those factors make Michigan State as appealing as, as I originally thought. So... If Rourke plays, I, I'll go ahead and take Indiana in this one. I won't take Jackson on the road in this spot, who looked a little shaky last weekend. Michigan State guys, they just don't score points. Look, the, the, Sammy mentioned their opponents, right? It's BC, Ohio State, Oregon, Iowa, Michigan. It's 19.7 points, 10 points by week, 32 against Iowa, back to 17 against Michigan. And that was a late score to even get to 17. They're just bound the red zone. They're one of the worst red zone teams in the country. And that's a part of having new pieces at quarterback. Young offensive line trying to figure things out. Not a lot of weapons. Like I, I just don't know if they're good enough to stick with the Indiana team that I think is getting better. They played no one. I, I give you, Sammy's right. They played no one, but they're proving the offensive line. They're proving on defense. Like I feel like they're getting better as a team. But I, I Jackson, I, I'm not doing that. If Rourke plays, if they announce him to play, and the number's still around seven ish, I'll gladly take Indiana before it rises up when when everyone wagers on Indiana. I'm sure we'll get the alert. He's a game time decision Saturday morning. Oh, we will. Find out once oh, the game oh, absolutely. Yes. I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> what happens in the gambling group chat stays in the gambling group chat. It did. We did. We, we did. We're good. We're good. I'm hearing that Rourke might play and he <laughs> might not play at the same time. He has a uniform. Breaking news. He has a uniform and he might wear it. He's warmed up, guys. <laughs> He's warmed up. He has a glove on. He's warming up. <laughs> They'll be warming up in, in in Fayetteville this weekend too. Arkansas hosts Ole Miss. Um, another just a kind of a a road game for Ole Miss, which is kind of I, I I don't know. I'm I'm not there with Ole Miss at all. I, I don't I don't really want to get involved here with uh, w with this game. It, it almost feels like just Ole. Miss. I don't want to say going through the motions, but that was a a pretty ho hum effort against Oklahoma last week in in Oxford. Now you're going on the road to Arkansas. You got the Georgia game on tap before you go to Florida. It would probably be dog or pass for me, even though to last week that was um, – I should say two weeks ago that was a kind of a disheartening performance against LSU for, for, the, for the Razorbacks and then obviously blown out the worst team in the SEC. 
it would be uh it would be dog or pass for me here, well, Sammy P. I was actually at a wedding on Saturday, and guess who was at this wedding? Wayne Arkansas Kiffin. Bobby Petrino. <laughs> no, close. Arkansas legend Dan Hampton. And wow. when I told Hamp that Arkansas scored 58 points, his response was, in how many weeks? That, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny because this has been a team – that all season has sort of slowed what you do well. I mean, you hold Tennessee to 14, you hold AM to 21, you hold Auburn to 14. Not that that was that tough. Um, they've, they've been so good at taking away what you do well. And we look at the total open 55 down to 53 and a half. That's an Arkansas move guys. We all understand that the old miss move is over. Sharps like old miss. They like the over sharps. Don't like old miss. They go under. So, that total move tells me that there is respect for the backs to at least slow this game down and maybe try and run it to keep Jackson Dart on the sidelines. Mississippi open seven. That also really hasn't moved. So the fact that Mississippi is not getting bet side and over, just like reading the screen is sort of a built-in natural respect for Arkansas. I didn't bet it. I did think that was a good line too by hand. 58 in how many weeks? Just one, one game, Dan. Name yeah, uh, uh, Arkansas has got some issues in their secondary, but Ole Miss can't block. So uh, to me, this game comes down to if Ole Miss can block them, they'll make some plays. You think Ole Miss and you think, like Sammy said, you think overs, you think basketball and grass. It's really not the case this year. The offense hasn't been as good as expected. Meanwhile, defensively, they got some monsters uh, up front on the front seven there. So uh, I, I can't back a bad offensive line on the road. It'd be Arkansas or nothing. I don't know. I, I guess we're... Are we talking ourselves into a little round robin money line parlay of like Arkansas, Michigan State? Who's the other one? Louisville, maybe another mm. team team to come. Maybe just a, you know, a little sprinkle and keep our Saturday a little more interesting. I mean, like I'm weird in for that. Stuff happens every year when we yes. get to November. That first weekend in November, yeah. chaos. There's always chaos somewhere. Except a lot, in, a lot of times it coincides with next week after the the first uh, release of the college football playoff. Right. He's like, maybe it'll be different this year because we got 12 teams. But a lot of times it's like that, oh, shit, we're in the top four. Or, oh, shit, we're five or six and we need to do this. And teams see that and players mm-hmm. like re- emotion, have an emotional uh, response to that. So, yeah, may- maybe uh, maybe uh, a lot of dogs in the next couple of weeks might not be. Well, that, I mean, I, I don't I don't have any crypto or anything. I really don't know anything about it, but uh oh, here we go. If, if I did, I'd probably uh <laughs> I'd, I'd probably empty my my accounts and because it probably is the currency of the future. And I uh, thought I thought you didn't know anything about it though, and it's the currency of the future. That's what I'm told. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I know who's not losing so, this so weekend on the road. On the or- I'm just looking at, I'm just looking at a live bet a uh in uh, inter Empoli uh, under two and a half live, but as we uh, I know who's not losing it at, at home this weekend, uh, or losing on the road. I can't even talk. Oregon's not losing to Michigan. There we go. I can't. Oh, no. don't, don't put Oregon in the round no. robin. Don't or Michigan in the round robin. Don't do it. It's not happening. No, we de- definitely wouldn't do that. No, but do, do, do you think so? You don't think this is a potentially a flat spot at all? No, so a couple reasons. One is that look, if the team wasn't flat at Purdue, they're not going to be flat at Michigan, right? I mean, this is still Michigan. Um, and they're, they're just, they haven't played that way this season after the offensive line got fixed. And I don't expect them yet. Yeah, Michigan be zero and eight. It doesn't matter. Eight. No, this is, you're going to Michigan. It's, it's a big opportunity for the team on national TV. Again, kind of funny. Brad Nestler called the game in 07. He's now calling the game, uh, this weekend, a little full circle moment for the broadcasting crew. But guys, I look, I watch Michigan's film. <clears throat> the offensive line is better than I think the offense is. They have good pieces like on the team. But they don't play that well as a team. I was looking at some at some numbers, guys. I mean, they're on offense, they're 133rd in yards per successful play, 105 in points per drive. They're 129th in big play. They only have 22 plays of 20 yards or more this season. That's they're crazy. A service academy. Like, yeah. And, and but will exactly what they will, are. Will, but they're a service academy that doesn't buy into running a service academy offense. They run their regular offense with a bad quarterback. Like they should come out this week and just have have Orgy play quarterback and do the Navy offense. Just run the exact offense Navy does. But they're not going to do that. So look, I, I think that Oregon's defense can be pickleballed a little bit. You know, five yard carry, four yard carry, nine yard carry. But Michigan can't score in the red zone against Oregon, in my opinion. 
I, I think Oregon, so they start fast in this game. It's over. Michigan, all three losses. They were down the second quarter by at least 10 points. Um, I'm, I'm not... I'm not betting on Oregon in this game, but guys, Sammy, I, I think it's it might not be close. Michigan is definitely not coached like a service academy. No. That's all I'm going to say. No. Definitely not coached like one. Michigan team total under 14 and a half, I think, is a good play. I was reading some of the reports, some of the recaps from last week, and boy, the the uh, you know the Michigan beat writers, these guys are raving about the quarterback play. Like, finally, we got a good game good game out of the quarterback. You look up, they got 120 yards passing. <laughs> you can't be one dimensional well, against this Oregon team. Uh, look, if 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 they score 15 plus points, they beat me. They beat me. I'm just going to you know tip my cap. I like I really like Michigan team total under 14 and a half. They had one entire explosive play in that game that was not a trick play. That was it. One explosive play. It was not a trick play. They had a, a, a running back pass for touchdown and a flea flicker that counted as two trick plays. There were three explosive plays. That was it. One non-trick play. I don't know how they're going to move the ball in this game. All right, all right Jeff. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you here. You want to do it now? I'm going I'm to put you on the clock. No, because I, I, want, I, I want Will and Sammy to, to take part in this and, and hear. Tell me something about... The, the the visiting locker room at the big house or your favorite memory of, of, <laughs> of that game in 07, how small the, the toilets are in, in, in that lock. Just, 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 just let it, let it all out. I, I know you've been waiting to do this. So Story time. I actually, I actually did have a pretty big bet on Oregon plus the, plus the points and on the money line yeah. in that game, because I don't know people who might remember that was the game following the, the loss to Appalachian state. I think everyone was right. off. I'll bounce back. And, uh, and Dennis Dixon made himself the Heisman front runner that day, and Oregon made themselves a the national title contender that day. And then, unfortunately, uh, that went down the drain. But, but take us back to that day, Jeff, and, and just just let, let well, put us on your knee and, and tell us a story or two. Um, well, I remember we were watching film that week, and Michigan looked slow on defense, and we thought maybe it's just like a, a down game, right? App State just beats them, whatever happened, and they ended up being really slow. So that was a memory I have. Like we were just we ran by them. Here's I'll give you guys another one. So um, Michigan has one tunnel. Okay, it's like in the middle of the field, right? Like we see Michigan players run out of the tunnel, like it's run the middle tunnel. And for some reason, I got put my locker got put um, like the door right next to the door of the locker room. So like when you swing the door open the visiting locker room, the first person was Jeff Schwartz. Okay. In a chair and again, kind of a foolish decision. You can, you kind of guess where this is going. So, you know, most locker rooms are sort of tucked away, right? Like the access to get to the locker room is secure. And you know, if the door swings open, no one sees anything, but not in Michigan. So, uh -oh. <laughs> so post game, um, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm getting changed and the door, swings open and the Michigan band is walking up the tunnel at the same time. Oh boy. And luckily I had a towel covering my groin area, but this band member, a young lady just saw, like looked right at me <laughs> and the look on her face was just of absolute terror. Imagine Jeff hell, Schwartz hell. post. Did she post make game. eye contact? Where was oh, she? Yeah. Was she oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, it was, yeah. Eye contact was made. Um, I tried to make as awkward as possible when I saw her too. I made a, I might've said like, maybe I made a weird face or something, but yeah, it was not the best decision to put Jeff Schwartz <laughs> as the first locker uh, into, wow. into Michigan. But I, I will say um, it look, it's the big house, man. It, it was, was a ton of fun, obviously winning that game. I like they brought the all whites back uh, for this game. I, I wonder if Dan Lanning were on a statue of Liberty in this game, how we did in 07, he's very connected to the history of Oregon. Now uh, I'm, I'm, That'd be fun. It'd be fun if he was able to do that this weekend. It would make a lot of us uh, reminisce about the past. Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was certainly a uh, a wild game, for, for sure. I'm just. I'm, I'm waiting for my bet to cycle. Um, other uh, interesting game this week for a potential tricky road spot: A and M uh, oh, laying yeah. small number on the road at South Carolina. Like so much talk about A and M going to the playoff, going to the SEC title game, hosting. Uh, Longhorns meet ten and one versus ten and one Thanksgiving weekend. South Carolina has been a very dangerous team when they when take on these top ten teams lately. A couple of wins outright, and nearly beat Alabama a couple of weeks back. So, uh, I, I just wonder if if Elko is finally going to make the decision to just go with Marcel Reed, a quarterback. Because when he came into the game last week in the second half, it was it was lights out. Yeah, lost by two in Tuscaloosa at Bama, lost by three to LSU. I mean, it's a, a pretty good resume. I like the under. I think these teams are very similar. They're both really good defensively. Uh, you don't really know what you're going to get offensively. Both teams are going to run the ball. 
Um, so look, 44 is a low total, but I don't think it's low enough to me. This could go, you know, you could be looking at like, uh, I don't know, 16, 13 type of game, 17, 14. I think this, even though it's a low total, Sammy, and it's not an uncomfortable or it's not a comfortable viewing experience when you're betting under of a low total to me, I, I think this one goes under still. I'm curious to see, I'm pulling it up right now. What I have in this game, what's the rotation number? Uh, 389. Sorry. Stand by. Can I also share with you that Michigan is two and six ATS? I'm Do you have any towel story, one. Sammy? Uh, not that I can share on the Bear Bets podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm 23 20. Oh, that's a cop out. I'm right on the number. That's Ooh. under. That works for me. Under. Oh, nerd. Take a stand, nerd. <laughs> we got 44 for the total, right? I'm barely. Well, I wouldn't. I don't think I have much of an edge, but if you like the under, buddy, let her rip. Yeah. That's the 44s. See, 44s yeah. are close. I mean, isn't this a prime letdown spot for AM though? Like big home win. It feels it. Like, isn't this like a classic just take the dog at home in the situation and just it, you know, hope it works out? Cause this is college football, right? A prime letdown to spot. Answer your question, Jeff. Yeah. Sully says just quickly, it is. I, I, we get like some text notifications every now and then because see, uh, he is actually is a good producer. He listens yes. to what so it's like we, which is good, mm. and he he's, he's answering the question for you. Yeah, the question was, is it a prime left down spot for AM? Sean yeah. says it is. That's it. Yeah, I think it is. I I, I have no I have nothing on this game. I I would, but I would lean South Carolina. If you bet AM, I, I I can't endorse that. Well, I just I just need another uh, two wins from AM. Uh, well, actually, I got eight. Andy, did I get eight or eight and a half for the season win total? I forget. So feel pretty pretty good there. Um, if we, if we can get another, uh, another win or two, uh, what haven't we covered, uh, Sammy FCS Heisman conference bets and anything else out there that, that that's, uh, in, 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 in your crawl that you want to get out there. So the FCS play did lose last week. I did hear from our guy because I texted him right before we started taping FCS question mark. And, uh, he's got one. I don't know if you guys still want it or not. I mean, he's lost a couple in a row now. Well, okay. Let me let me go. Let me go to the six. Di- let me go to the six digits. I know Jeff's got a pen ready. It is a three zero nine zero zero. We're going way down. We're going way down out oh, of the three zero eight. It's FCS bear. What do you expect? Yeah, well, there are a bunch of three zero eight. Three zero eight. Let me get down to three zero nine. Okay. Three zero nine zero zero eight. North Alabama oh, up to minus ten. Gorillas, right? Sure. Alabama, I believe, are the gorillas. Yep. Cool. Right. No idea. No, wrote it down. North Terry, Alabama. Terry Bowden's old team. North so Alabama. This is, week, this is week 10. These are six and three on the season. Not good enough. No. I know. No. I, and they're not even my bets. Lions. But yeah. Well, North Alabama are the Lions. I mean, I don't know yeah. what. Yeah. Who's the gorillas? Social media Someone. will tell you that you have to win about 90% <laughs> of the time <laughs> to make money. First state might be the gorillas. This um, is going to drive Bear nuts that he didn't get it right. Um, so, yeah. okay, when he says when he says up to ten, I'm guessing it's going to open like seven or eight, and then as we know, these are these are going to move because it's backed by a group yeah. that gets it where it wants to go. So you got to attack on these early. This game is not until five p.m. Eastern, so oh. that line might not come out until like, like <laughs> three p.m. or something. Be sitting, I'll be sitting there in the fourth quarter of Ohio. Penn State and like we're getting ready for like the Breeders' Cup uh, Classic, and I'll, I'll be scanning for a North Alabama number. Yeah, um, the other, I, I like one other game we haven't covered, guys. I, it's kind of Navy minus eleven against Rice. I could see that. They're they're mm-hmm. Rice just fired their coach. I, I don't believe in sort of the the, the coach bout at times, but this is back to Navy playing bad football teams again. Like last week was a buzzsaw. We talked, all four of us had nailed this game. Yeah. We talked about this. It was a buzzsaw. I think they had five turnovers. And Notre Dame, this is Rice. Rice right now is right in line with the rest of the teams they played. 119th in the country in points per drive on offense. And now they're, they're better on defense. They're, they're 43rd. But overall team, they're 108, which is right in line with the other teams Navy has blown out this season. Bounce back opportunity. I don't think they're going to be down or like not play hard this weekend. So uh, I, I think they go into uh, to uh, Rice is in where? Outside Dallas Bear? Houston. 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 Uh, Houston and, and and beat up on Rice. It, it, it's funny because um, a couple of weeks ago when I gave out Charlotte plus the eighteen or whatever the hell it was uh, against Navy, uh, one of my one of my buddies texted me and he's like, "Ooh, he goes bad teams versus 
service academies who are just going to kill your will running the ball. That's a, that's a problem. And sure enough, it played out that way with the Navy just blowing out Charlotte. So I could potentially see a similar type thing. Navy still on the running for a, uh, for playoff birth. If they, if they went out and win the Correct. American, they, they could easily still be in the mix and the mix for conference title as well. So yeah, I, I certainly think there's no, uh, I think if, if anything, it's more of a, okay, we, we turned the ball over a million times last week against the best team we're going to play all year. And, and and they show up. Will any other uh, games off the radar that you got your eye on? Yeah, how about a team in our backyard? UConn laying seven and a half to Georgia State Friday night uh, to me. And look, uh, we, we've talked about these Friday night spots being friendly to the dogs. A lot of covers, a lot of outright upsets. This is a lot of points. I know UConn Moore has done a nice job, but boy, you look at the schedule. Speaking of Rice, they played Rice, they played Buffalo, they've played Temple, uh, Georgia State. I know it's been a bad year, but they played Van- uh, they played Vandy and beat Vandy. To me, seven and a half is a lot. Uh, maybe that's one you, you throw in those little money line round robin parlays because I think Georgia State has a chance to win that game. I like them plus the seven and a half. I'm trying to get you to you know one of these weeks blow off big noon kickoff, play hooky. We'll go watch a UConn game maybe after we'll uh i don't know go, go catch the nick a knicks game we'll watch see you know call towns with his new team i know you're a big knicks guy we need a little show bonding after one of these uh you know, how, we, how are we uh i, I know jalen brunson went under his uh his point his point and uh rebound total the other day and I, I know that because you sent me a laundry list of it but I, we get one of these like draft kings like boosts like on that equinox day where a bet bet year or whatever leg parlay so i i don't i, I text will and hey, what, what do you you like anything in the NBA tonight? And, and and my man sends me about 35 player props that he's uh that that he's played. And I, I think of the ones that I chose, like that might have been the only one that actually won. The poor job pie. But the uh yeah, one one of them was the uh, the Jalen Suggs like under. And I th- I think he wound up going over in that first half. I think that was like the re- the ridiculous, like like whatever the score was at halftime was ridiculous. But yeah, maybe we can throw in a uh Maybe we get like a, a UConn women's men's doubleheader as well. Maybe go yes. to Yale, what, what, watch a Yale hoops game, grab some uh, grab some Sally's pizza as well. We can sure. do that. Ooh, all right. I'm inviting myself as long as we go to Carvel. <laughs> For Fudgy the Whale? Sure. You yeah. had, come on, come on. You had to have had a Fudgy the Whale cake, birthday cake growing up, right? No, we didn't have those in Chicago, Bear. Those were out east. We didn't have those in Chicago. I know, I know Will had a fudgy the whale cake at some point in his life. I would think so. I would think so. Carvel, very underrated. As we're wrapping here, though, we're doing non-football. Are we are we getting more games in the World Series by the time um well, not by the time we do our next show, but uh, I don't I don't know how you guys feel. I think Yankees win game five. I think they probably lose in game six, but I, I was shocked by the stat. Uh the teams that fall down three nothing. Nineteen seventy was the last time a team even forced a game five. So maybe after all we will get a little bit of drama in this World Series. And man, if Yankee if you're a Yankee fan, winning game four almost a little salt in the wound because game one just got away from you. And if you could have won that one, we should be looking probably at a two two series best of three and Probably headed to seven, but uh, who knows? Maybe we will get some drama in this series after all. I think I'll be I think pulling. They, be pulling think, for you guys. I think they win. <laughs> I think they win tonight. I think they win tonight too. It just it, it, it. I I almost want to see the Dodgers punished for punting on that game last night. Just just sending all the yeah. their, their worst relievers out there and just assuming that there's no way they they could possibly lose four games in a row. I want to I want to see the Dodgers punished for punting that game. Sammy, you can bring some uh, some Portillos with you as well from Chicago to our to our little uh, state of Connecticut Equinox uh, sports party. All right. Hell yeah! As long as we get Jeff there, I will leave you all with one thing: if you were to bet Freddie Freeman to Homer in Game One, oh my and goodness, roll it and roll it all the way forward and bet it in two, three, and four, you'd only be up three hundred thousand right oh now. My God. <laughs> At all? Yep. Uh, That's right. We're we're gonna make that when Travis Hunter winds up winning the Heisman, right? Yes. Uh, hey man, we, we we all have those tickets. I, I could see Will though, guys being a being a Yankees fan who grabs a ball at a Mookie Betts glove like that. I could, oh, that, that, that was certainly a Will uh, move. No. It was a Will move. Will's a sportsman. Will's a sportsman. How, how about that? The Yankees were going to let him come to game. Those fans come to game five, and baseball was like, "How about no?" Um, <laughs> they, guys, I, I was kind of shocked. Like he, I, I I didn't really I didn't watch it live. I saw this morning. He opened his glove up. And pulled yeah. the ball out of his glove. And well, the other guy what held you think you're gonna get his a call at that point. Oh, they're gonna oh, we ripped the ball out of his glove. And you know, that's not it's a foul ball. I, I understand if it's if it's in the stands, you whack it away. That's part of you know the home yes. field advantage of not letting the but uh to go in the guy's glove and try to pry it out. I mean, what do you think's gonna happen there? And the other guy held his arm down, his other yeah, he's throwing arm yeah. down, which is crazy. 
teamwork. We love it. So yeah, well, Will, just so you know, I know you like like the again, like the two regional jets, New York, Pennsylvania, New York to Philly, Philly to State College, the, the nice small planes, but at least we do have the uh the single side seat has been been reserved. So uh, I'm I'm on the, the the single side of the regional jet, which is always a uh, it, it almost feels like first class. <laughs> Maybe you'll be landed, or you'll be able to watch Game Seven on the way home. Who who knows what the future and all? The yeah, future you're is. right. Uh, ooh, I think I I think my flight lands at like eight ten or something like I, that on Saturday night. I just don't know if they get past the Rodon start. I think they win with Cole. I just don't know if Rodon win. That's such a bad matchup with all the home runs he gives up. Mm, totally. All right. Hopefully we uh, we educated, we entertained, we story time with with uh, with, with Jeff from inside the big house. Um, <laughs> In a towel. In a towel. And a towel. Exactly, a little white towel. Oh, I think it's gonna be my my Halloween costume now. I think Jeff's tomorrow, towel. I'm gonna be wandering around, hell, wandering around, hell. Wandering around Penn State tomorrow night in, 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 uh, in, with a with the uh, 2007 uh, Oregon Nike like dry fit like under the uniform top and a towel. And then just no bear. I had just, bear. Just to make sure, I had no clothes on. Just FYI. So <laughs> if you want to do it, if I don't you want to do yeah. you want to do no clothes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pass on actually actually my halloween is going to be very exciting uh, i'm going to give a shameless plug uh, i'm going to be on twitter with a couple of uh horse racing buddies of mine breaking down the breeders cup on uh a twitter spaces at eight o'clock so uh, uh if, if you're if you're doing nothing while watching uh uh two lane blow out charlotte and uh Ooh. and the jets embarrass themselves against uh the texans the favorite uh, new york jets twitter and, 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 was that the favorite new york jets yeah <laughs> even with the, even even without Diggs and uh, Nico Collins, I can't get behind that. So, all right, we've rambled enough. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Have a great weekend, guys. Bear, every Saturday at some point, I remember. Oh shoot, I need to bet an FCS game. I go to my notebook <laughs> and I look at, at what I wrote down, and here it's North Alabama up to minus ten. Hopefully on Saturday, I remember at some point to do that. I might be without kids, kids and wife again this weekend. Bear, I mean the dream. Cool. So we can again. They might go to the beach again because there's no school Monday and Tuesday next week. So I might be just me, the dog, uh, CBS. It, it, it was weird watching a, a a Big Ten game on CBS last weekend, but uh, my ducks are back on CBS. So um, yeah, I might just be just us us chilling again. A little chilly. I might make some. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why is there no school Monday? I don't know. I don't make the rules. Well, Tuesday. I, I, I get. I get no school Tuesday. I, well, I but get that. I, I don't think it's for the election though, because I, I that's a great a gripe of mine. Since we were joking about election earlier, like election day should be a federal holiday, so everyone can go vote. Yes, that's my uh, that's vote for whoever you want, but Correct. like we should all be allowed to vote and do so without worrying about missing work at all. Um, but I don't think they're off school Tuesday to vote unless unless the elementary school is a voting site. That's also possible. I, I actually don't know that. Uh, you know, some schools become polling places. But yeah, they might go to back. I have, to, I have might, that here. They might go back to the beach, um, and uh, that means I get to watch football by myself. Which means I get to watch my fate of the week, which is I'm fading Air Force for like the fifteenth week in a row. Bear, I'm taking Army team total oh, over wow. thirty one and a half. Because Air Force is very bad, and I keep making money wagering against Air Force. Army is off a buy. They're first in points per drive in the country. They're second in yards per, in, in yards per rush in the country. But more than anything else, guys, Air Force, 98th in points per drive on defense. On the road, they're allowing 38 points per game. They're, they're 123 yards before contact on a rush, which means they're not getting any defense alignment to hit running backs at all. Um, and they're 118th in yards per rush overall. Uh, I know possessions get limited when you play Air Force or when you play a service academy, but I but I looked this up a bit there. Teams that facing Air Force are still averaging 11 possessions a game because Air Force's offense is so bad, they're not getting off the field. So the, the old traditional of like, oh, you only get an eight or nine possession against Air Force. You get 11 right now. So give me Army over 31 and a half points hosting Air Force. So, so no, no fear of harkening back to 2013 when a one in seven Air Force team wound up beating Army by 14, huh? Was Army good in that? game no, i don't know no 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 that, that, i mean that was gonna be I, i'm looking at air force they were, they were three air force has lost by well, they're, i mean they're also have not covered a game this season we've we've talked about that air force has yet to cover a game i mean they lost to new mexico on the road bear by 15 points allowed 52 points in new mexico N not great no no not not at all no
I'm I'm getting my 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 uh, best bet of the week presented by DraftKings Sportsbook uh, is going to be uh, the, the game that I am at Ohio State Penn State. I am going to go under 20 and a half points for Penn State. Uh, Will kind of alluded to it earlier about you're probably going to see a slow start, uh, feeling out period. The game was kind of ugly last year, 20 to 12. Yeah. Uh, Penn State typically doesn't put up a bunch of points against uh, a, a lot of these top 10 teams that they've been playing. We don't know the quarterback situation. While I think uh, the offense might look crisper uh, with, with Prabula, a, a quarterback, I was talking to some people this week who kind of watched that Wisconsin game back, and they're not sure that like he sees the field great at this point. He made a couple of throws uh, against Wisconsin that were more fortunate than, than anything else in, in terms of uh, making a play that could have been very couple of tight windows that he made. That they they just didn't think he necessarily saw the defender there, so that might come back. He he could be great, or he might wind up throwing a couple picks this week uh, against an Ohio State defense that played pretty well last week against uh, Nebraska. Not sure Penn State has the vertical threats to really uh, expose. Uh, and I don't say expose uh, to to really make Ohio State's defense pay. Uh, if they can't run, we will see. So. Uh, Feels like a lower scoring game. Penn State team total under 20 and a half uh, is what I'm looking at for my best bet. If you say that Caleb Downs go guard their tight end every play, what's Penn State's mm-hmm. offense bear? It's correct. It's it's nothing. So uh, I'm with you. We talked about earlier. I think it's it's a struggle for both teams to get in the 20s or even to one team to get in the 20s. So I'm with you there. Uh my uh DraftKings uh best bet. Um I'm going to hate watch this game, Bear, so I might as well put uh, uh, some money on this one. Uh, my, the two teams I hate the most, USC, is at Washington here. Uh, give me Washington uh, plus plus the three. Uh, might, there, there, there might be some some two and a halfs out there uh, at the time you're listening to this. Uh, first of all, Washington's 4-0 at home. They stink on the road. We've talked about this last week when I faded Washington at Indiana. They haven't played at home in a month, guys. So the four note home, they're just better at home. We talked about the third down offense, third down defense, rushing yards, yards given up, all that stuff. USC four and four as well. They're one and three on the road. The the one road game they won was at was uh, the game in Vegas against LSU. Since then, they've gotten worse on defense. They're ninety third on rush defense. They're eightieth in havoc rate. They're eighty. They're ninety ninth in havoc rate allowed. Bad offensive line, bad defensive line bear on the road. Also, Pacific Northwest, a little wet weather in November. Uh, USC coming from su- from uh, sunny Southern California. Uh, I think Washington wins this game outright. It's one of those games where I know not all you guys, not all you guys are going to watch, you're going to pay attention to. Both teams four and four, uh, but give me uh, Washington here uh, plus the points. Fourth time this year, SC has been a short been a short road favorite. Lost the previous three. Lincoln Riley uh, does outright. not cover as as a road favorite. Oh. Go back, go back since 2001. Rick Link, Link Riley's team has been a favorite away from home 16 times, three and 13 mm-hmm. against the number, two and 10 at SC. So this is a uh, th- this is a situational play where it, it hasn't mattered the year, it hasn't mattered the team. It's the cir- it's the circumstance, it's the yep. situation, it's the type of t- teams. Yeah, I-, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm, I'm going to take a little uh, a little U Dub on the money line as well. So. Well, I, I can't morally do that, Bear, because I want them to lose every game. So, like, it's a moral conundrum there. So, I'll just take the points and hope they just tie and then the stadium explodes and we don't have to watch Washington play football again. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, – I'll take I'll take the points in this one. Look, this is funny because, like, this is one of those games where where win totals matter. Like, we have win total bets. Like, I have, I have an alt total for Washington under six wins. I kind of need them to lose, but I – you know, but I need them to cover this game. So it's kind of like a weird situation where I think they actually win the game, but in the long term, I'd be better if they lose. I don't know, man. A convoluted I can't, I can't believe that. I can't believe USC will have beaten LSU, and I'm going to lose my USC over seven and a half. It's just amazing to me that that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, yeah because they still have Notre Dame left, right? And UCLA, yep. I think. Yeah. Yep. UCLA, I don't know what they're they're in Nebraska this weekend. Kind of a fun game. I don't know. They're off a bye. They played well at Rutgers. I don't know what UCLA is going to be this weekend. Low number two, only six and a half. Who the hell yeah. knows what's going to happen with Nebraska after that gutting loss last week? Again, they very yeah. easily could have won in Columbus. And yeah, that, that that'll that'll be interesting. Only, only six and a half here, but below a touchdown is always a little a little risky. So go ducks. It's uh you got something else for us before we yeah. go? Go ducks. 
that's you know, you're, 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 you're fine. Bring, bring a towel. That's all I have to say. <laughs> bring a towel. Appreciate everybody again watching on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to that Fair Bits YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for uh, listening on Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, appreciate your rating, review, and subscribing. Once again, our numbers have uh, been good, so I've been told. I haven't gotten an update in a while, so maybe that's bad. Yeah, that means the numbers aren't as good anymore, so. <laughs> Keep listening. Mm. Keep interacting. We love y'all. Have some pretty stuff thoughts up there, like I said, on, uh, on, on Twitter over the next couple of days as well. For Will and Sammy, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Remember, less you bet, the more you lose when you win.